del poema La ciudad de Constantino Cavafis. Dijiste, iré a otra ciudad, iré a otro mar. Otra ciudad ha de hallarse mejor que esta. Todo esfuerzo mío es una condena escrita. Y está mi corazón como un cadáver sepultado. Mi espíritu hasta cuándo permanecerá en este marasmo. Donde mis ojos vuelva, donde quiera que mire, oscuras ruinas de mi vida veo aquí, donde tantos años pasé y destruí y perdí. Nuevas tierras no hallarás, no hallarás otros mares. La ciudad te seguirá, vagarás por las mismas calles y en los mismos barrios te harás viejo y en estas mismas casas encanecerás. Siempre llegarás a esta ciudad. Para otro lugar no esperes, no hay barco para ti, no hay camino. Así como tu vida la arruinaste aquí, en este rincón pequeño, en toda la tierra, la destruiste. Un hermoso poema de Cavafis, el poeta de Alejandría. Hoy día está con nosotros el poeta, el narrador de Estambul, que también ha permanecido en su ciudad y le ha sido fiel a ella, y que la ha convertido en un centro. Todos queremos que nuestras ciudades sean el centro, que nuestras vidas puedan ser el centro. Quiero darle la bienvenida a Ojan Pamuk, al centro del mundo, al fin de la tierra, a Santiago de Chile. Muchas gracias por estar aquí en, en el programa Una Belleza Nueva. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for the kindest words. Eh, Orham, ¿qué siente usted con este poema de Gaddafi y cómo lo interpreta o no en su relación con Estambul? I love that poem so much. Um, one, um, two years ago, one year before the Arab Spring, I was in Alexandria and I visited the Gaddafi house, mm. a beautiful place and full of melancholy of the Greeks that who had left the town. In the end, what he predicted um, and happened that Kavafis uh, lived all his life in Greece. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. He died there, but all the Greek culture there is almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. And it's the sadness of it, it is that, that uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, cities change. We mm -hmm. hope that um, the cities stay with us all the time. Maybe now, when the cities change, the memory of the city is living with us, mm -hmm. but we are not there anymore. Bueno, eh, Baudelaire decía, la ciudad cambia, hay, más que el corazón del mortal, o París cambia más rápido que el corazón de un mortal. Baudelaire's city was an ev evilish place. My Istanbul, my understanding of city mm. is not that dramatical or satanical, it is more mysterious, mm. heavy mm. with um, mm. melancholy or mm. a, a heavy burden of problematical past, mystery um, and a sense of richness of the empire that collapses, the idea that once upon a time there were more successful, more happy and gr and grandiose people here, but then this happened, that happened in the history and they all disappeared mm -hmm. and now I'm living in the ruins of that old civilization is my sense of Istanbul. This was the Istanbul of 1950s, 60s by the way. Now it's changed but maybe we'll talk about that. And uh, in that, for Baudelaire, city was mm, modernism, cruelties, mm. evilish things, mm. a bit uh, drama. Um, he, he had the sensibility that he liked Edgar Allan Poe, that kind of thing. Mm. While my, perhaps, city also has Baudelarian or Poesque, or even Kafkaesque um, um, phantasms mm. and mysteries, while on the other hand, it's more, I would say, a motherly place where you cry a bit about um, the sense of loneliness, um, deterioration, and of empire feeling. Of, um, it's um, uh, less uh, evilish. My city is less evilish, more mm. sweet and melancholic than Baudelaire's Paris. Bo Baudelaire hablaba del spleen como un sentimiento básico. Eh, usted habla en eh, Estambul del Ursum, una palabra eh, turca que tiene que ver con, no sé si se traduce como amargura o angustia. Me gustaría que me explicara esa palabra y ese sentimiento eh, que usted describe también aquí en Estambul. Turkish, uh, um, Turkish melancholy, different than Baudelaire's spleen mm. or even Western melancholy, mm. is also a philosophy of life. That 
we feel, um, I, I argue, in, of course, be essentially with the book that you ha held in your hand, Istanbul, mm. and also with other, mm. uh, my other novels and books, that, uh, uh, that cities uh, give you, uh, shape your spirit in a way, and mm. this is where, um, mm. essentially depends on two things. But one, by the visual landscape, um, um, two, that this landscape lends a feeling to you. In fact, it was Baudelaire's generation who suggested that the beauty of the landscape should be associated with the feeling it evokes in us. And, and in each city, really, with, uh, each city with characters have different, uh, gives us different feelings. In my books, essentially in this Istanbul, I try to pin down, analyze, see through that feeling, which I call Huzun, an mm. Arabic Turkish world, which is very popular in Turkey, more or less uh, very close to mm. Western melancholy, but it has also mm. Sufi mystical and ethical connotations of uh, an ethics, mm. uh, perhaps comparable mm. to what Japanese call nobility of failure, mm. that we have a lost empire, that it seems being poor and mm. destitute uh, is a sort of a we are doomed, we will be poor forever at the edge of mm. Europe, never getting the modernity and mm. richness. Mm. This kind of introverted communal feeling, not a Baudelaire-esque, very private and singular mm. feeling of an individual, rather sadness or melancholy of a community. Estaba pensando que, que no, no, cuesta encontrar una palabra en español, pero tal vez una palabra, no sé si cercana, aunque distinta en... En portugués, en brasileño, es saudade. 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 So many people saw that. Orhan, your melancholy looks mm. like saudade of Portuguese. They told me so many mm. times, mm. perhaps. But, but mm. I'm not a Portuguese speaking person. Mm. Uh, but, mm. I, um, but I like and I'm born into this kind of um, melancholic feeling of towns. I don't like too much modernity. I like mm. deteriorated modernity. Mm. Liking is not the mm. ri uh, right word here. I associate or communicate well with is the right word. Después de leer sus libros, de, de recorrer Estambul con usted, las, la, las laberínticas calles de Estambul a través de sus novelas, de todos sus personajes, eh, me quedo con algunas sensaciones. Me quedo con el olor de los tilos, eh, me quedo con la fuerza del bósforo, un río donde uno puede nadar de espalda para uh -huh. cuando uno tiene una angustia, un dolor o una pena de amor. Uh -huh. Me quedo con <risa> los gatos de Estambul, uh -huh. que son mal criados. Uh -huh. Me quedo con la abundancia de, de los perros. Uh -huh. Y me quedo con la manera de mirarse de los habitantes, cómo hay todo un lenguaje de, de mirada. Si usted cierra los ojos ahora, ¿cuál es la imagen más entrañable, la más personal de Estambul? O una calle, o una esquina, o una sensación, o un momento. First, thank you very much for making me remember mm. Istanbul with such good, uh, precise mm. words. Um, mm. That uh, it's the subject of staring at each other, testing your will with staring, or um, the dog staring at each other, a sort of a menace. Mm. Um, I mean, Istanbul of my childhood mm. was a, so a town, um, desolate town, uh, full of solitude, and especially. Uh, mm -hmm. I romanticize, perhaps, in my books, in my black book, in Museum of Innocence, in uh, my uh, earlier book, even my name is Red, that the most beautiful and very crisp, perfect mm -hmm. image of Istanbul is and at night. Uh, the street, street lights are a bit faded. The city is, you still feel that it's living. The, mm -hmm. chim the smoke is coming from chimneys. Everyone is cozily inside and someone along in the, at the night is walking in the streets. This is more or less, and it, this is of course in mm. winter, a black and white or a darkly mysterious town. This is what I saw perhaps for quite a long time. I slept uh, 4 a.m. at night. I'm a night person. I used to write at, at night, and it this formed also my imagination. Also, perhaps I was scared by my family, by maids, by people, don't look at outside, in the next um, roof mm. there is mm. a big monster or an animal, there's always don't open, mm. you know how they scare you with fairy tales and it's, it also uh, stays with you all your life, you look this, uh, this kind of scary, uh, a little bit of dramatical shadowy uh, imagery. Usted dice en Estambul, todo el que siente curiosidad por darle un significado a la vida, se ha preguntado al menos una vez por el sentido del lugar y el momento en que ha nacido. 
¿Qué significa que yo haya nacido en tal fecha, en tal rincón del mundo? Y quiero preguntarle si hay una respuesta, o son varias respuestas para esa pregunta que usted mismo se ha hecho. ¿Cuál es el sentido que usted haya nacido o siente en Estambul y no en otro lugar? Uh, of course there is, but let me tell you, um, now we are, uh, now we are, um, I like the, uh, uh, this subject of romanticizing my relationship with my town, but let me also be down third realist for a moment and leave aside my romanticism. Mm. Uh, I lived all my life till the age of uh, 55 in Istanbul. Um, I, it, um, I, uh, there were periods in my life for 25 years I did not go out of Istanbul. Mm. After 1990, mm. my books began to get translated internationally 20 years ago. Then around 2000s, at end of 1990s, I was internationally known. Then everyone began to refer to me as, oh, the writer of Istanbul. For, uh, up to then, mm. I was not aware of I was an Istanbul writer. Mm. I was not self-conscious mm. about this. Mm. Like all identities, all perfect identities, mm. I was not aware of my identity. Mm. It was mm. something others mm. referred to me as, ah, oh, uh, Istanbul writer. Mm. Um, because I was just writing about, like all authors, about uh, human beings, their humane stories. Mm. Because all, I, I lived all my life there, and I came across human beings. In fact, that I wrote about humanity. But 20 <laughs> years later, they told me, you're writing about Istanbul. Yes, I came across humanity in Istanbul. Mm. But, on the other hand, I was also self-conscious about my city, mm. that I argue that cities, their um, climate, their history, their imagery, uh, their atmosphere, um, uh, make and shape our spirits. Tal vez voy a mostrar a muchos de nuestros eh, telespectadores a, a lo largo de todo Chile, Chile usted sabe que es un país muy largo, de norte a sur, hay muchos pueblos y rincones, algunos tal vez tienen la imagen de Turquía, una imagen muy vaga, la confunden a veces con Arabia. Vamos a mostrar el mapa, una parte del mapa de la ciudad. Ustedes ven aquí el Bósforo, ven el Cuerno de Oro. Hay una escena muy bonita al final de Estambul donde usted recorre desde un muelle esa zona del Cuerno de Oro. Eh, y está esta, esta sensación de que, o esta realidad, de que Estambul está, son Asia y Europa tocándose, casi... Eh, 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 a punto de abrazarse o darse un beso o encontrarse o separarse o fracturada está en un punto de una fractura y de un encuentro ¿cómo se ha dado en usted esa, ese, ese encuentro, abrazo o fractura entre Asia y Europa entre, entre comillas, Oriente y Occidente a través de, de, de su propia vida por ejemplo los que viven who live in Istanbul do not care that about this detail that much. You just cross the Bosphorus, mm -hmm. never thinking that, that you're crossing from Asia to Europe, it's just your city. Mm -hmm. If you look from Chile or from Europe, it's mm -hmm. wow, what an interesting thing. One every day you're commuting mm -hmm. to your work from mm -hmm. Asia to Europe and returning. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't mm -hmm. notice that. Again, something that we don't notice, mm -hmm. but every, um, this is something tourists are interested in. Uh, that once you live in a city, it's not different if you know New York from going from Brooklyn to Manhattan. It's not different from mm. one part of Paris going crossing it. It's just you're crossing mm. a big water. Uh, it's not a river, it's a bigger thing. But then you forget about this. But then, if this is a metaphor for, on the other hand, truthful and realistic metaphor uh, for, Turkey is based on two continents, two different cultures. Turkey mm. is a country heavily embedded in an Islamic culture. Our classics are Islamic classics. Our nation is embedded in Islamic culture, mm. um, which is not necessarily is political all the time. And also, there is, especially in the last 250 years, great desire from the um, mm. ruling elite of Turkey, be it Ottomans, mm. the um, um, last um, rulers of o Ottoman Empire, and of course, Kemal mm. Atatürk, the founder of Turkish state, and the following, uh, rulers wanted in many, many different ways to westernize, occidental, uh, make Turkey oxi an occidental mm. country in a radical way, just like the Japanese did, just as uh, more like the r Russians did. Mm. Y eh, eh, lo que uno percibe en, su, en sus libros es que, incluso en Estambul, es que Estambul a usted le interesa como lo ven los extranjeros, 
eh, le ha interesado, no sé, Estambul ha sido visto por Teofil Gautier, el escritor francés, por muchos franceses, por Gerard de Nerval, que estuvo ahí, por Joseph Brodsky, etc. Eh, Even Borges was there, <laughs> but he didn't write, he didn't no. write too much. There was a nice no photograph. Nada. ¿Escribió algo? Uh, the, the, uh, he, there's a book called, uh, by Borges called Atlas, mm -hmm. more or less, for mm -hmm. his postcards, his uh, mm -hmm. photos, and then there is some commentary. He, like, he wrote sweet things about Turkish language, how, how poetic it sounds. That made me happy because I like Borges. Ahora, de, de, lo, de los escritores que han estado en Estambul y que han escrito sobre Estambul, ¿cuáles son los que le han interesado a usted más para conocer mejor Estambul y para vivir? Usted dice vivir Estambul como un extranjero, usted mismo como un extranjero. Well, the, the, uh, these writers, of course, write about most of them that I also analyzed in my book Istanbul of 19th century um, Istanbul or early 20th century Istanbul. Mm. I, uh, I read these writers more with curiosity, less about learning, but mm. they have the uh, um, detached Westerners critical eye or they have a painterly eye sometimes, as in Gerard de Nerval, and are, they are good in descriptions. Also, the problem with all these non-Western countries, what we today call post-colonial countries, Turkey was never a colony, a colony so Turkey is essentially not a post-colonial country, but let's say non-Western, um, poor, traditional countries, their, their, private, uh, their, um, their cities were more described mm. by foreign, international, French, mm. or English mm. especially, French and English speaking, uh, and of course here in Latin America, Spanish visitors mm. who describe mm. outsiders mm. Who, who wrote about the town um, in a more penetrating mm. way also, who painted, draw, um, mm. made, made mm. Engravi engravings of the town rather more than the locals. Mm. This, is a, this is not only uh, a Turkish Ottoman situation, this is an universal situation. We both get information from these 19th century, early 20th century visitors, learn from them, and then say, well, you are an Orientalist, you are a bad guy, you did not represent mm -hmm. us. This is a problematical mm -hmm. situation. Um, I tried not to do that, that political correct, politically correct, um, anti, you're sugarizing us, this or that. That's, that's not the point about them. Mm -hmm. Some of them had good eyes, some of them sugarize and orientalize, some of them, like a painter mm. Melling, I, in, in, I mentioned mm. in Istanbul book, mm. or Gerard de Nerva, okay. they have good eye, they have good language, they can make a distinction between what is expected from their readers. Also these writers, just like today, say if I'm going to Iraq, there will be an, a, a cliche of the mm. cliche they would be expecting mm. it. They also mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. the cliché, say, you know, my readers are expecting this mm -hmm. cliché, mm -hmm. but actually I saw this, mm -hmm. and which is a, an honest thing, and, and, and it's sometimes much more interesting. You also see that the representation of cities, if they are outside of the West, are full of clichés, because if you use the clichés, they publish your essay. Mm -hmm. You have to address some of the mm -hmm. clichés. Hay un cliché de Chile también, y, y es difícil erradicar yes. ese cliché, y es difícil conocer Chile porque es un país que tiene sus secretos igual que, obviamente, que Turquía. Hay una fotografía que quiero mostrar acá, que es usted, muy pequeño, en brazos de su madre, eh, en el edificio Pamuk, ¿no? Ese niño eh, comenzó dibujando, comenzó pintando. Sus padres le hicieron creer que era un gran pintor, y él se lo creyó, y comenzó y pensó que iba a ser pintor, pero de pronto decide ser escritor, y al final de la novela son unos paseos por unas calles oscuras y estrechas, como la de esta fotografía, por unas calles amargas, sucias, oscuras, en blanco y negro, después de esos paseos, cuando decides ser escritor. Y le dice a su madre, no voy a ser pintor, seré escritor. Hablemos de, ese, de, esa, de, de esa decisión en la vida, en qué momento usted se da cuenta que va a ser escritor, y un escritor que siguió siendo pintor de alguna manera. I, um, this is, I really don't know a one-sentence answer to that question, and, and, and perhaps one of uh, the painful feelings I had in my life. I was really a happy painter, I thought, when between, especially 10 years old, 15 years old. Mm. Um, that everyone, I, I come from a family of engineers. My grandfather was a civil engineer. My father and uncles were also civil engineers mm. who did railroads. I always 
in a, in a funny way, say that I'm just like William Faulkner, whose grandfather did railroads. Uh, I, um, uh, I was expected that I go to the same civil engineering school um, and, be, and I in fact went there. Uh, but since they saw in the family that I am a, have an inclination for art and literature or this or that, they said, well, this is the black sheep of the family. Why don't he be an architect? That's why I enrolled to School of Architecture and I thought that just like Corbusier, I will be both a painter and mm. an architect. Mm. But mm. when I reached the age of 20, just like you said, a screw was loose in my head, really. I cannot fathom that. I cannot explain mm. that. Uh, or mm. I explain that in my book, Istanbul. It's a mysterious thing. Then I begin to uh, not enjoy painting, or I begin to come to mm. some problem, problems mm. with painting. Perhaps I'm coming from a culture, mm. Islamic culture, where there is not a mm. tradition of outwardly hanging big paintings, mm. no galleries, mm. books were at, at most mm -hmm. illustrated, as I wrote in my name is red, books were illustrated inside the books. For I, I really don't know the reason, but this helped me because I already prepared myself for a life of solitude in a room. Either mm. I thought I would mm. be painting, then I switched to um, mm. literature. But I really did not start as I'll be a writer, I'll be a writer. I, I, I started as I'll be alone in a room because I'm not a, uh, I cannot give orders, mm. take orders, I cannot mm. live with, I'm, I, mm. I not knew mm. this sensibility in me and I, in an almost desperate way, so what do I do? I should do some artistic thing and start writing. But of course, um, after 17, all writers say this, this is another cliche, between 16 and, say, mm. 30, I was reading like a man. I was reading a lot and learning and enjoying so much what I read. What did you read and produced more passion? What were the novels that most marked you? Dostoyevsky? What were the first encounters that were the most that were enamored of the novel as a genre? Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, mm. they, they, they were speaking as if they were sitting next to me and they all sounded so convincing, mm. Mm. so deep. Um, novels did not only teach me um, other lives, other peoples, other cultures, that mm. humanity is more or less similar everywhere. Novels mm. also teach me how to form my, my spirit. At the age of 19, 20, I was reading mm. novels also to make myself a good person. Um, and I think I also mm. argued this is a third world way of reading, you know, not only you read to learn literature or entertain and yourself and learn, but also you have a great desire to quote civilized, to be more civilized, to be more developed, um, to be a good person really. So uh, I was almost eating books, you know, uh, mm. in, in uh, Neruda in his, I confess that I have mm. lived, had a one a sentence that I like that say he says, uh, and I was at that time reading like everything and, and I read his book also translated mm -hmm. immediately that I read this sentence, oh, there are so many books in the world. How, how do we eat, uh, 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 read all of them? Why don't we bur uh, if, um, cook them and eat them? He said there in his imagination. I really liked it, for, for example, when I was reading that much at that age. Bueno, bueno, eh, eh, usted tiene elementos en común con Neruda. Eh, eh, en muchas de sus novelas son muy importantes las cocinas. Por ejemplo, Me llamo Rojo. Son tan importantes como los talleres, los pintores, las cocinas, donde se conversa y se, se prepara parte importante de la intriga. Y también la faceta de coleccionista de Neruda, eh, que vamos a comentar al final del programa. Usted también es un coleccionista. Y hay una frase de Neruda en esa misma memoria en donde él dice, mi vida está hecha de las otras vidas. Eh, eh, yo he hecho mi vida a partir de las otras vidas. Blaise Andrars, que es un escritor francés, eh, un día en un museo ve una pintura de Gerard de Nerval, del mm -hmm. que hablábamos recién yeah. que estuvo en Estambul. Y en el cuadro abajo había una frase de Gerard de Nerval que decía, je et autre, un autre. yo soy un yes. otro. Y ahí Blaise Andrade tiene una iluminación, yeah. una epifanía, y decide transformarse en escritor. Eh, y usted ha dicho que de alguna manera eh, ser escritor es descubrir ese otro, ese otro Orhan que, que estaba escondido en una parte en Estambul. ¿Qué significa eso? ¿Quién es ese otro? ¿Y cómo ha sido su relación con ese otro, con ese otro Orhan? First of all, now that you talk about um, Neruda and objects, I like Neruda's poetry, mm. especially when he suddenly notices the objects in daily life, and I'm that kind of, or hope to be, that mm. kind of mm. novelist. Now you say, talking about, Ramba also had words to the effect that I am the other, um, um, that I have, um, uh, uh, for, for, um, 
my tendency as a novelist is a desire to identify with others. Mm -hmm. um, in my, my naive and sentimental novelists, uh, and all of my essays are argue that the art of the novel is based on a one strong human strength. We human beings have the power to identify with the pain of others, mm. comma, mm. to see the world through the point of view of mm. others. Mm. We can mm. do that. Mm. And I think, I don't know, mm. um, and once we end, the art of the novel, which I am a humble servant of, is based on mm. this human strength. Mm. And when you ask me politic, politics, thank God you're not asking me, I say that politics in literature mm. is only that, mm. not our par uh, party cards or who are we voting for or who are we backing in the mm. ne uh, next elections. Mm. It is uh, a man tries to see the world through the point of view of a woman is a very political thing indeed. A man who tries to see, a, or a middle class man who tries to understand the copper miner in Chile uh, is doing an mm. ethical and political thing, although it's a very hard thing too. You are, because mm. um, it's a hard thing because you're not that person. While it's a very mm. humane and respectful thing that you are mm. trying to do that, and you are also expecting that mm. there will be readers who will also want to identify with the copper miner. So there is this sense in a novelist spirit of a desire to be like someone else, in, which is very ethical, I think, mm. and, uh, and turns out mm. to be political. Also, there is uh, another sense of the other, that, uh, that I'm not happy with myself, that I think that I, I wish I were born into an other family, mm. other mm. people, mm. You, um, mm. a sort of a more related with personal expression and fantasy and one's imagination. Um, um, this is more um, poetic and self-expressive. I like the uh, classical theme of doppelganger, uh, that is the twins, that, that there is a person in the world um, 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 like us. Um, ETA, German mm. writer ETA mm. Hoffman, Edgar Allan Poe, Pushkin, mm. um, Nabokov, mm. And our Borges mm. all wrote about this. Everyone took had its. And I also wrote a book, but this time I based it on this map. Mm. In a way, east west. I, mean, I wrote a double uh, doppelganger, double story, and based it on eternal history of Turkey. Are we traditional Muslims? El Castillo or? Blanco, no? Yes, it, uh, that's Aquita. White, Aquita. White Castle. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a two. Uh, I'm interested in otherness, uh, but in very, very different motivations. Once you have this desire to be other, then you have a desire to be right about, as I did in my in book Snow, about the Islamic fundamentalist who wants to kill. Um, now, being a novelist mm. is identifying with others. Hay una frase de Stendhal a propósito de la política que dice: La política, usted lo coloca de epígrafe, nieve. La política en una obra literaria es un tiro de pistola en medio de un concierto. Algo grosero, pero imposible de ignorar. And the next sen uh, sentence is, we are going to talk about ugly things. <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, I, was, uh, I was writing a political novel that um, the, uh, one of the mm. problems with political novel, I'm not talking about censors mm. and political problems with the government, mm. is mm. also the facts are horrible. Mm. Um, um, mm. They are dirty, you know, torture, this mm. or that. But in the end, literature should be beautiful. How to write about them in an honest way, and also how to not make your novel a sort of a horrible mm -hmm. reportage. Mm -hmm. um, these are, uh, for example, I refer to that. Mm -hmm. Yo quiero, quiero decirle un piropo, que no, no, quiero, no quiero que lo sienta como exagerado, sino que es honesto. Eh, eh, demonios, una gran novela política para mí es Demonios de Dostoyevsky, tal vez la más grande. Y otra novela, es Nieve, yes. de la que quiero hablar ahora, Nieve. Eh, y esta novela ocurre en un pueblo que es Kars, en la provincia. Es una novela desgarradora, tiene una, para mí por lo menos, una vitalidad y una luz, sombra, una energía muy análoga, ¿no? igual a la de Demonios de Dostoyevsky, pero en, en una clave más turca ¿no? y, y más de, 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 la, de, de, de su estilo. Hablemos un poco de esta novela eh, y voy a leer el comienzo que es muy bello, el, el comienzo, con, que muestra además esa capacidad extraordinaria de narrar que tiene usted, muy visual, porque usted es un, un narrador visual. Usted ha dicho que, que ser eh, novelista es pintar con palabras. 
El silencio de la nieve pensaba el hombre que estaba sentado inmediatamente detrás del conductor del autobús. Si hubiera sido el principio de un poema, habría llamado a lo que sentía en su interior el silencio de la nieve. Alcanzó en el último momento el autobús que le llevaría de Er Surrum a Kars. Había llegado a la estación de Er Surrum procedente de Estambul, después de un viaje tormentoso y nevado de dos días, y mientras recorría los sucios y fríos pasillos, intentando enterarse de dónde salían los autobuses que podían llevarle a Kars, alguien le dijo que había uno a punto de salir. Y más adelante dice... Si el viajero que se sentaba junto a la ventana no hubiera estado tan cansado del viaje y hubiera prestado un poco más de atención a los enormes copos que descendían del cielo como plumas, quizás hubiera podido sentir la fuerte tormenta de nieve que se acercaba y quizás comprendiendo desde el principio que había iniciado un viaje que cambiaría toda su vida, habría podido volver atrás. Eh, ya uno está dentro de la novela, cae la nieve, no va a dejar de caer la, no la nieve durante toda la novela, Thank es impresionante. You. Eh, y esa nieve eh, produce una sensación al mismo tiempo de limpieza, de pureza, pero también produce una sensación de melancolía profunda. Y bueno, y al final de la novela uno como el narrador llora. Yo lloré al final de la novela, como lector. Esta es una confesión impúdica del lector, pero yo creo que le tiene que haber pasado a muchos lectores. Lloré con el narrador. Eh, y me imagino que para usted tiene que haber sido un, todo un trabajo, una búsqueda, un viaje, el, el, el entrar en la provincia profunda, en, en los dolores de Turquía, las alegrías, en el amor, en la política... En, todo cruzado como en la vida. ¿Cómo partió esta novela? Tengo entendido que usted fue a Cars a investigar, que habló con los personajes del pueblo. Cuénteme un poco la historia de esta novela de nieve. Thank you very much for the sweet words. We have to thank my translator Rafael Carpintero who did that lovely translation. Muy Trans bueno. Yeah, wonderful. I'm very Bella good. traducción. I'm... En general las traducciones al español son muy malas, ¿eh? se lo digo aquí yeah. <laughs> públicamente. Pero esta es muy buena. Sí. <laughs> okay. sí. I see. sí. Now, You know, um, uh, what you read, that I mean, uh, that uh, a character, Ka, uh, Ka, is in a bus approaching um, the town of Kars, then this northern eastern town, in a very poor, very dispossessed, probably, mm. underdogs of mm. the very poorest live there. Mm. And in, in fact, that uh, some 10 years ago, I read on front page, big article in a Turkish newspaper, a whole town was on sale. It was something you can buy the whole town to a million dollars because everyone was leaving. Uh, mm. Something like what happened in Valparaiso, mm. that in mm. Valparaiso, mm. Panama Canal and Nitrat, mm. uh, uh, sí. in mention sí. of Nitrat, sí. uh, in a way deteriorated. This, there was a, cost, uh, there was a port uh, with um, Soviet U Union because of Cold War, mm. Turkey being on the NATO and West side. Mm. Uh, it was imposed on Turkey that take, Turkey closed that door and suddenly, just like Valparaiso, this town went down. Mm. So I thought, with my sense of melancholy, I go to that kind mm. of place, just as I was my first day in Chile, mm. went to Valparaiso mm. yesterday. I went to that, I, mm. I had the story in my mind before. I thought that I should mm. go to this poor town, lots of political problem, mm. because there were also Kurdish guerrillas mm. fighting with the Turkish government. So if you go there alone and you're looking silly like a silly tourist, no tourist goes there, they will immediately get, get you. So I went to one of the major Turkish mm. newspapers, mm. get a press card, and went there. Most of the things that, hap mm. that, is, that are described in the first 200 pages of mm. the book happened to me, actually, that I was mm. followed by civilian and uh, police, that there was a very funny mm. little uh, um, t city TV in a city of 50,000 people, and I went there saying, mm. I'm coming from mm. Istanbul, please tell me your stories. I'll, I will put them mm. in a reportage. There I lied, mm. because so I was, in fact, mm. went there. Eh, to write a novel. Eh, Usted mentió como el personaje, como Cars. Que, que, yeah, eh, <laughs> yes, but you can do little lies for literature, you know. I went there mm -hmm. like, uh, more or less feeling mm -hmm. like Graham Greene going to a strange place, mm -hmm. although it was my country. Mm -hmm. But also don't forget that mm -hmm. I'm coming from middle class, well to do, Istanbul family, while this was the poorest mm -hmm. part of Turkey. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to m discuss my problems there. And what were my problems? I'm a Turk, I want to belong to the nation, belong part of it, mm. um, uh, while on the other hand, is, uh, um, embrace the, the reality of the nation, while I have also mm. secular, modern, democratic, egalitarian ideas of the cult European, but they are not European only mm. ideas only, they are universal ideas. My, uh, my problem mm. always in mm. Turkey, be happy in Turkey, also embracing your ideals, your standards. This is always problematical. 
my car, my character is always also or maneuvering there to be alive and to be to integ to protect himself integrally because there are in the town Islamic fundamentalists, Kurdish nationalists, military uh, army who wants to do a military coup, so forth and so on. I don't want that. Uh, Ahora, lo que uno agradece en esta novela justamente es que nosotros tenemos la caricatura del fundamentalista islámico, la caricatura del islamismo. Y aquí a través de personajes concretos, por ejemplo Azul, que es un ideólogo, un líder de, de, de un movimiento radical, sobre todo a través de Nesep, ese joven islamista tan puro que tiene eh, eh, que hacerle preguntas al narrador, que tiene dudas sobre Dios, uno se, se enamora de esos personajes y es, es capaz de entenderlo y colocarse en su piel, en su lugar, en sus frustraciones, en sus dolores, no, no aceptar obviamente la ideología radical. Y ahí hay una idea muy importante que usted también ha dicho en otra parte, que es la compasión que tiene que tener el narrador por los personajes y que también tiene que tener el lector. ¿Cómo se da esa relación de compasión y de amor de usted por sus personajes? Una buena pregunta, porque esta es la damning question of an every honest novelist. Um, Snow wants to be a realist novel. Um, it has surrealistic, anthropological, funny, imaginative sides, but essentially it wants to portray Turkey accurately, um, truthfully, in, its, in its, all of its problems. But in, if you want to do that, then you, under, you should understand the woman who wears a headscarf by her own will, or an uh, Islamist who believes in his la uh, religion so much that he does po uses politics for it. You have to understand this. And once you begin to understand a person, then, then your friends, your community says, Orhan, what? Are you getting religious? Are you from one of them? Uh, the distinction between understanding, paying attention for the reasons, and approving gets so thin in a novel, in a good novel, you just cannot understand whether the novelist thinks this way or he is just being realist. This is the damning, very, very um, delicate moment of the novelist because you have to fine tune everything. Yes, the, uh, the reader should feel that you are not on the side of the fundamentalist, while the reader should not feel that I made a car caricature of this person. It is more troubling, more. Um, uh, uno, uno podría clasificar a los novelistas, eh, los buenos y malos novelistas, los que tienen compasión. Y los que no tienen compasión, ¿no es así? Yes. Uh, um, um, or one should, uh, um, the, the greatest problematic of any novelist is being uh, truthful uh, and uh, representing everything with the same ob objective, passionate understanding and also giving his, expressing himself. A novelist is a person that, who does two things. Self-expression, I also project my phantasms or dreams I have, you know, As mm. I said, mm. I'm a dreamy character who wants to be a painter, mm. but I also want to be, a, do, uh, with all of my books, not with one book, do a whole panorama, uh, a fresco of Turkey mm. in a realist way. These are two, sometimes these contradict. If I, my panorama is too objective, where, where, I, where is me? Um, if, if, mm. if I express myself too much, where is the panorama? Mm. Uh, these are all very mm. sentimental, calculating side mm. of my mind, always thinks this. Mm. Yeah, but there is a general politics, not daily, daily politics, but making how, what should be my picture like. Mm. Um, all, I always worried about these questions. Me gustaría hacer muchas más preguntas de la novela, pero el tiempo nos va a devorar. Pero simplemente recordar que yo soy muy fiel, trato de ser y que creo ser fiel a mi mujer y la amo profundamente, pero le fui infiel en esta novela. Uno puede ser infiel en la literatura. Y, y me enamoré de Ipec como el personaje que hay rendido a sus pies, no, ante su belleza, su ambigüedad, porque son personalidades femeninas ambiguas que ocultan, que incluso son traman, eh, eh, hacen tramas y a veces mienten, pero uno se enamora desesperadamente por ella y estaría dispuesto a cometer los mismos errores y volver a enamorarse de ella para todo so lo que ha ocurrido. Eh, pero me enamoré sobre todo, eh, no en sentido homosexual, me enamoré de un personaje que es Nesep, que, que hablábamos recién, que es este islamista joven puro, que en un diálogo con el narrador, que es el poeta, que es un turco que, exiliado en Frankfurt, vuelve a Estambul y Estambul vuelve a esta, a esta provincia que es Kars. Y le dice, muy desesperado, prendió un cigarro y le dijo, si Dios no existe, eso quiere decir que no hay paraíso. Y si es así que millones de personas se pasan la vida entre carencias, pobreza y opresión, ni siquiera pueden ir al cielo. Entonces, ¿qué significado tiene todo el sufrimiento de los pobres? ¿Para qué vivimos y para qué sufrimos en vano? Y Kars le dice, Kars le dice Dios existe y el paraíso también, pero él le dice, no, 
me lo dices para consolarme porque te damos pena. En cuanto regreses a Alemania volverás a pensar que Dios no existe como antes. Eh, ese diálogo es extraordinario. Brevemente, ¿cuál es su relación con Dios, con lo religioso y con el Islam? Una, brevemente. No, no quiero una explicación um, teológica porque no, no es I'm teólogo. Uh, no. I'm not a um, religious person, um, but on the, on the other hand, uh, re religion takes very little of my spiritual life. My religion is literature, mm -hmm. particularly novels. Uh, um, also, Borges is also a part of my religion. Mm -hmm. Put this on the side, but on the other hand, mm -hmm. I think, um, uh, I think um, uh, that in my work, I belong to Islamic culture and civilization that the whole civilization made me. I belong to it, um, um, but I'm a secular person who has a, this thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so my problem, in fact, was in, in Black Book, My Name is Red, uh, um, mm -hmm. to combine this heritage, take it seriously without falling into its mystic or religious traps or discourses, mm -hmm. um, also being a private person, an mm -hmm. individual, not a community person, I don't belong to any community, any party, mm. any organization, really. I'm not that proud of it. Mm. I'm a solitary person, but this is how I am, and I have mm. to be mm. honest Thank to you. myself. Um, so, an Islam, and any, any, way, any way of be, mm. being uh, religious is deeply being com uh, communal. Uh, these are the contradictions. I belong to that culture in a very distinct, and I try to do this, address this very mm. individual way. I accept that culture, but I'm not religious. I'm heavily secular. Mm -hmm. I want Turkey to be modernized. While on the other hand, I accept, I don't make essentialist and negative judgments mm -hmm. about the whole mm -hmm. culture. Para quienes buscamos desesperadamente un sentido a la vida, para los eh, modernos, postmodernos, los que vivimos ya en un mundo moderno, entre comillas, postmoderno mm -hmm. y laico, etc., mm -hmm. cada vez más secular, mm -hmm. la novela tal vez es la última esperanza de un sentido. Es, usted lo dice por ahí, es una religión, es una posibilidad religiosa para los laicos y modernos. ¿En qué sentido la novela es una alternativa de sentido? ¿Y cuál es el sentido que puede dar la novela a la vida? It, it is really meaning. Uh, I, I have high ideas, still very high ideas about the novel. If a journalist calls me, Orhan, we are doing a page uh, uh, about the death of the novel, I always make a joke about that. <laughs> the, uh, the novel is not dying. Sí. It's going very well. Let me uh, look at the numbers. Um, I have a publisher in Shanghai who is telling me that, Orhan, that, um, just like a rain, novels are coming from Chinese, young Chinese people who are writing. I think in the, the art of the novel, as we know today, is... Um, um, put into its shape by Stendhal in, uh, in 1850s, Balzac, mm -hmm. Dickens, more or less. And that shape is still vital, changing, we're changing it. And it's much more popular than it used to be. It used to it started mm -hmm. as a low art, and now it's a high mm -hmm. art. There is a community of reader, reader novels all over the world, M novels, ma uh, marginalized poetry, drama, Uh, um, maybe they're now fighting with blogs or blog writing or this or that. It is the essential big literary communi uh, communication between uh, nations and inside the nations. I believe in the author of the novel. It's a great art and it is using our um, very um, ethical uh, power of understanding, needing, interpreting. Mm -hmm. uh, novel is today doing what philosophy high philosophy or, of course, uh, religion did for centuries for people, and it's doing that with daily life details. In a novel, we see people uh, with description of a glass, mm. uh, we come across uh, little petty daily things. We, someone looks out of the window, but, it, uh, but we know the story, mm. then his, that person's look has a philosophical, mm. mysterious meaning, and of course, we congratulate the novelist who organizes his novels Uh, addressing mm. those moments of mm. being, what Virginia Woolf told, or how it feels to be in this world. The novels should address the main questions of life. The value mm. of a novel, I think, should be how accurate a representation of life it is. I'm not talking about realism, I'm talking about values. What is important in life? Mm. Family, friendship, personality, mm. distinctness, success, Happiness, and by the way, what mm. is happiness? Mm. These are my mm. subjects. Mm.
Y una de las maravillas de la novela es poder trasladarse no solo en el espacio a otras ciudades, otras culturas, a otros, sino en el tiempo, que es lo más difícil para un novelista, traer un tiempo. Y ahí entramos en esta maravillosa novela, Me llamo Rojo. Me llamo Rojo, en, ese, en este libro usted entró en el mundo de los miniaturistas eh, orientales, los pintores, calígrafos, ilustradores del siglo XVI, que venían de la tradición iraní, eh, pero que también se dio en Turquía, y es la historia de un sultán que le pide a sus artistas o ilustradores más importantes un libro que celebre las glorias de su reino, pero pintado con la técnica o con una cierta manera o con la forma de la pintura occidental que ellos están conociendo por primera vez y que es muy distinta a la pintura oriental. Eh, es un libro extraordinario donde usted hace hablar a los personajes como una mil y una noche, pero escrita por un escritor del siglo XXI. Eh, donde los, además los personajes se dan vuelta como en las miniaturas también y miran al, al lector. Hay un momento que el lector, los personajes le hablan a uno desde ese siglo. Bueno, ahí está Esther, la bubonera, están los pintores, está Aceituna, está Cigüeña, estos ilustradores que dedicaron toda, toda su vida entera, su infancia, su, solamente a, a, a lograr esas excelsas pinturas. Eh, me gustaría que me, que me contara cómo le nació a usted ese amor por esa, por esa tradición de la ilustración. Lo que ve usted en este libro es un amor profundo por ese arte. ¿Qué es ese arte, para quienes no lo conocen aquí en Chile, de la ilustración? After I decided to quit painting and switch my imagination to writing, um, the painter in me, the artist in me, did not die. Uh, um, ten years later, everyone was asking the question you ask me now, why did you switch from painting uh, to literature? Mm -hmm. And when, uh, now I'm a, uh, somehow a little known writer in Turkey. I decided to mm. write about joys of mm. painting. Essentially this, when you're a painter, when I'm a painter, I'm less self-conscious. My hand is painting, my mind is looking as if mm. this is someone else um, mm. uh, uh, who is doing. More or less, Ka in snow also, poems come from, to mm. him from outside. What is this mystical thing mm. that we are painting or being uh, writing, mm. creating mm. in spite of ourselves. Mm. Uh, art is coming, pouring mm. out from me. Uh, I wanted to write about that. Mm. I wanted to write about actually at the beginning of a uh, com uh, community of artists, mm. jealousies, groups. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, in a, um, this is not, uh, not only about a, a group of paintings, but also represents the artistic sensibilities, how jealous we are of each other. Um, the joy of being an artist, mm. transcending yourself, and of course getting happy mm. with your art. This kind. At first I started an actually a novel that takes place in contemporary Turkey. But I realized that the modern Turkish painter who is imitating European examples, it will be a novel about East, West like that. I didn't want that. I wanted to go where the Turks or Muslim people painted purely. They had their own art in, I would say, 15, 14 centuries, what we today call Mughal Persian Ottoman art. And that was pure. Mm. Of course, nothing is pure, mm. uh, but they were strong there, also an empire. Mm. Ese arte extraordinario desapareció y uno de los eh, eh, protagonistas de la novela, que es un maestro de pintura, eh, dice todo va a desaparecer. En el momento que lo van a matar incluso, porque también tiene algo de novela policial esta yes. novela. Todo esto que estamos haciendo tiene la conciencia, va a desaparecer, la pintura, esto que hoy día están alabado por el sultán, algún día va a desaparecer. Y eso ocurre con todo el arte. Y uno tiene la sensación en este libro de que este es el canto de cisne de una época, la época de la ilustración, pero también es la sensación de que todo el arte, incluso la novela, yes, que hoy día queremos tanto, es fugaz como todos nosotros y que finalmente, a lo mejor en 100 o 100 años más ya nadie leerá a lo mejor a Dostoyevsky como lo leemos hoy día. ¿no? Y lo mismo le pasó a estos ilustradores. ¿eh? Eh, ellos dicen, un personaje dice, ellos pintan, refiriéndose a los occidentales, lo que ven, nosotros lo que miramos. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre la pintura del siglo XVI occidental que se da en ese momento y esta pintura turca iraní? ¿Cuál es la diferencia esencial? But you have asked me two questions. Sí. Let me answer them sí, one hago. by one. You said, la ansiedad, you, la ansiedad. Uh, you said uh, the tragedy of my painters in my name is, is re that they, uh, the smart ones realized that their art would vanish. My books are essentially, perhaps because Turkey's situation is like that, about cultural change. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. give this example. Let's imagine 
a Chinese village in the, in the middle of China, nowhere, um, then they have a habit of uh, calligraphying and copying manuscripts. Mm -hmm. And it produces so mm -hmm. many, let us imagine, so many examples. Suddenly, someone brings a photocopy machine, that, uh, and everything, is, everything dies. Cultural change is a, a dramatical, spiritual, mm -hmm. traumatic human subject. One day you wear your clothes and eat your tea in one way, suddenly something modern comes. You also desire mm -hmm. it. You're, you're said, that's it. There is also a guilty part in that. Definitely your child likes it. Mm -hmm. And the way you live, the way, and there are mm -hmm. more comfort mm -hmm. in it, the way you live, the way you, your sensibility is affected by that, mm -hmm. and you change. Mm -hmm. You resist, and also you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, I always argue that East and West in Turkey, the nation is not divided into two, the Easterners and the Westerners. It's always in the same heart. The desire for modernity and the desire mm. to embrace mm. our identity and our stories and past mm. are always in the same heart. And if you mm. look at it that way, you mm. understand everything, I argue, naively. Uh, now, um, 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 the other subject, um, the other question, um, um, when was about that, uh, would you? La diferencia entre la pintura del siglo XVI, mm -hmm. la pintura occidental y la pintura oriental. Una ve y la otra okay. mira. Yes. Um, um, I would say it's in the end, uh, this east-west distinction is also a bit inaccurate because all um, pre-modern, all painting mm -hmm. before the Italian Renaissance was like mm -hmm. Islamic painting, mm -hmm. miniatures, mm -hmm. whether 12th century European miniatures or 15th century mm. Persian miniatures were more or less the same. Mm. The difference is this really. One is uh, pre-modern painting, which now is a global thing. There, no mm. one is talking about globalization of vi visual mm. arts. But visual arts globalize by the invention that was made in mid-15th century mm. by the Italians then accepted by mm. Northern Renaissance, mm. then is a global thing we mm. never discuss. My God, we're seeing our lives mm -hmm. through their point of view. What's the difference, Orhan? It's impossible to sum up these distinctions in two or three sentences, but I'll do my best. The difference is um, the pre-modern or classical Islamic painter or uh, 11th century French miniatures are mm. more or less representing, picturing our representation of our, uh, that is in our minds. We see the king, he is at the center, mm. and he is biggest than everyone else, and the whole thing is focused, mm. even the world, mm. the whole world is small, is smaller than the king. While in reality, we don't see the king like that. We see the king, you know, he's the most, uh, he is smaller than a fly. But if you, mm. <laughs> if you draw the king smaller than a fly, uh, then the bishops and the imams will say, mm, our <laughs> king is bigger. So invention of perspective also, as I suggest in my name is Red, invention of individuality, seeing the world through one single person's point of view. While in pre-modern times, more or less, the, the, uh, the uh, pictures were more representative so you have a representation of the world in which, of course, the king is most important and the woman is least important, uh, and the flags and the soldiers and the guns or the stories, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Uh, invention of perspective is a radical, in the end, political, uh, mm -hmm. making individual important, and it's inevitable mm -hmm. that it will make the art of the change, art of the painting, just like as we realize digital, uh, in, uh, revolution is coming, it's inevitable. Uh, my paintings and the whole world saw that the whole pay, uh, visual world will change. The way we see uh, what uh, John Berger, the ways of seeing uh, terms as ways of seeing will change and it happens and it happened everywhere. Even the most religious kings and mm. Muslim wanted to be painted like that. Nos quedan muy pocos segundos y nos quedaron muchas novelas sin poder comentar como siempre, pero quiero recomendar especialmente la última novela a nuestros lectores, a quien quiera leer. A ver, es distinto conocer una ciudad, decía Julian Green sobre París, es distinto haber tenido una pena de amor en París a no haber tenido una pena de amor en París, para conocer la ciudad. Y esta novela es conocer Estambul con una pena de amor en la piel y en la sangre. Un personaje desgarrado por una pena de amor, que probablemente refiere una pena de amor suya de su juventud, que está descrita en Estambul. Pero lo interesante es que es una novela 
en la que el personaje se convierte en un fetichista y va coleccionando todos los objetos, todas las cucharas, se las roba, las tazas, que le recuerdan a la amada que perdió. Y hace un museo. Y usted ahora está haciendo un museo en Estambul que reúne todos los objetos de esta novela. Brevemente, eh, ¿qué sentido tiene juntar el gatito que estaba sobre los televisores en, típico en Turquía, aquí también en Chile, un gatito, un perro, unos perros que mueven la cabeza, juntar las cucharas, juntar el rallador de membrillo y hacer un museo sobre eso? A museum of innocence is really attempted to be just like Snow being a political novel, a love novel in the classical sense of the world. But it's not a novel that puts love on a pedestal saying how wonderful it is, how sugary it is, how I love lungs, love songs. It is, in fact, a critique mm. of mm. the rhetoric and ideology of love, mm. trying to be very realistic about it and saying that we human beings can also get very much attached to things and persons and tries to understand mm. what happens to us when we fall in love, not in a sugary way, but in a realistic way. And my understanding of love, it's something like car crash, you know, you just want to get out of it, it hurts a lot, you'd rather mm. not have it. Mm. I never think mm. it's a sweet thing, though, yes, there are some joys, of course, but those, <laughs> <laughs> those joys are ultra uh, uh, exaggerated. Most of the time, real love is problem. And if there is no problem, uh, there is no story, there is no love. And you are just sitting there in the same house looking at each other, rather you look at the TV. Um, while uh, I try to address these feelings in an objective way. One of them also is since it's heavily, uh, love is heavily close to attachment uh, when, we, uh, when the beloved, when the one we want to be with is not around, we attach things that remind us of her. Also, this is a novel about uh, love in an Islamic country, though it, it, it takes place about secular, middle-class, mm. Istan westernized Istanbul people. It is a novel, a love novel in a country where uh, love and sex outside of marriage is a bit restricted. Mm. Mo in Turkey, mm. still, most of the marriages are arranged. Mm. This public space where the mm. lover and the beloved mm. comes together is limited. Uh, and how do you communicate? Um, this repression also produces uh, sophisticated languages of looking. Uh, Turkish women, Turkish men know how to look to, uh, because you cannot communicate. At least you have to do with looks, with gestures, testing each other's um, patience, torturing the beloved, getting angry, endless monologues about the lover. Uh, preparations for the next scene, mm. Mm. all the things, um, Roland Barthes, a lover's discourse, uh, mm. all si, the si, things si. that a lover does. Also, mm. this book wants to be mm. a sort of an encyclopedia of the mad lover, while I never romanticize mm. my character. Mm. My character is very, behaves very egoistic man who doesn't, doesn't want to be mm. seen as a romantic, mm. but he just mm. cannot get out of it, and that's mm. how I see love. <risa> bueno, eso, eso, está escribiendo lo que nos sucede a todos, aunque no queramos. Eh, Orham, quiero agradecerle esta conversación, este, habernos hecho ver y mirar a través de sus personajes, a través de Ipec, a través de Car, a través de todos los personajes entrañables de la novela, habernos enamorado de Ipec y de Fusun eh, y haber entendido nuestra propia miseria y nuestra propia grandeza humana a través de los personajes de sus novelas. Usted, en el, cuando recibió el premio Nobel, Dijo, escribo porque no consigo ser feliz, escribo para ser feliz. Un poeta chileno, Enrique Lin, en un poema porque escribí, dice que escribí, tuve esa rara certeza, la ilusión de tener el mundo entre las manos. Porque escribí, no estuve en la casa del verdugo. Porque escribí, porque escribí, estoy vivo. Bienvenido a Chile, bienvenido al centro del mundo, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you so much also for your very sensitive questions and very sweet praise. Thank you so much. Gracias a usted, Orkhan.